Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to show you how easy it is to create radio buttons. Radio buttons are ideal when you want your user to be able to select uh, one out of a set of options, and you want all of those options displayed on screen at the same time so they can easily pick. The uh, comparative would be kind of a, like a selection menu that would produce a drop down list of options. So let's get to it. On my page, I've already got a section here to display my radio buttons. And radio buttons are a little bit weird in the fact that they do use a label, but we would generally put the label to the right of the input. Whereas with a text box or a select menu, input text, we would put the label to the left of the input. And you'll see what I mean exactly. So I'm going to start off with input type equals radio. So of course type equals text gets us, gets us a text box. Um, type equals password gets us a password box. Type equals color for a color input. Type equals date for a calendar or date input. Type equals email. Type equals URL. Type equals tell. Where's tell at? Type equals telephone. All those look like regular text boxes, but they just have a slight different effect on a user, on a user's keyboard if they're on a mobile device. But I want type equals radio. Now that's actually enough to see something, but it's certainly not as much as we need to do. Let's see what we get right now. Input type radio. Let's jump over to my browser, and there it is right there. There's my radio button. I've got one, and I can click on it and activate it. Notice I can't click on it to deactivate it. That's a little different than a checkbox, another useful tool. So radio buttons are weird in that you would never just do one radio button. You would always do two or more radio buttons. So let me go ahead and do another radio button. There we go. So I've got two radio buttons. And of course, there they are. And if I click on the first one, great. And if I click on the second one, I select it. But my browser doesn't know that these two radio buttons are connected. You know what I'm going to do really quick? I'm going to jump over to my styles. And I'm going to say input type equals radio. And input type equals checkbox. And I'm going to do transform scale um, two. Yeah, this will uh, double these these little guys up in size. And in fact, I guess apparently while I'm here, margin right. How about uh, there we go? So now I've got those radio buttons. However, when you use radio buttons, the browser needs to know that they are part of a family, part of a set. And we're going to do that using the name attribute. So back over on my editor, back on my HTML file, I'm going to make sure that these buttons share the same name. Name equals, we'll just say shipping. And I can just copy this and paste it. There they go. They share the same name. So check this out. Now when I click on my first radio button, it gets selected. But watch what happens when I click my second or you know, my second radio button there. The first one gets deselected and now the second one gets selected. So they're part of a set and they allow me to jump back and forth. Now if I had another set of radio buttons on this web page, they too would have the same name. They wouldn't have the same name as this set, they would have their own name. So radio buttons in a set share the same name, but they do need to be distinguished from each other. And of course, that's where the value comes in or and or the ID. So I'll actually do both. ID equals radio one, and I'll go ahead and also do value equals radio one. Now this is for shipping, so um, we could just go ahead and call this uh, standard. For this one, ID equals radio two. Remember, two elements should not share the same ID on a web page. And value equals express. Now, although they have unique IDs and they have unique values, that's still not very helpful to the user. So that's where that label comes in. I do need to supply a label. So after my first one, I'm going to go ahead and do a label for radio one. And this is going to be standard shipping. And then after my second one, I'm going to do a label for radio two or rad two express shipping. 
So now I've got those inputs and those labels. Now, if you recall, the for attribute on the label connects to the ID attribute on the input. That's going to allow the user to click on the label in order to activate the appropriate shipping. Now, clearly with my margins and stuff, it's a little bit misleading. It makes it look like makes it look like uh, my radio button is next to the previous one, but that's okay. But that's the basics for radio button. So the key is input type radio, and then they're gonna share the same name. However, they're gonna have unique IDs and unique values. Then we can use our JavaScript in order to find out which radio button selection the user picked. Thanks for hanging out with me.